So, last class we derived the steady state equivalent circuit uh, for the induction motor and from that we found out the torque speed characteristics. Okay. Now, today we have to uh, find out the block diagram for or how we can do the speed control for the induction motor from the torque speed characteristic. So, last class we got torque is equal to P by 2, P is the number of poles, number of poles in 3 V square, V is the applied voltage into Rs plus Rr by S is the slip whole square plus x1 plus x2 square, okay. x1 is equal to omega s uh, ls or oh sorry xx and xr and xr is equal to omega s lr, lr is the leakage inductance, these are the leakage inductance. inductances. Okay. Now, how we uh, how we drew the uh, torque speed characteristics? First, we took let us say S is small. S B is small. We found T is proportional to one by omega S. V square by R R into S. So, that means these are all constant, T is proportional to S. Then, so the torque speed characteristic will be like this. We have the torque with respect to slip. So, small value of slip, it will be like this, linear proportional to slip, then S is large, then we found torque is inversely proportional to S and is proportional to 1 by omega S V square by Xx plus Xr whole square into Rr by S. So, this is we have said inversely proportional to X. So, it will happen something like this. So, in between it will go through a peak and come back. So, how to find out the x maximum? See, the standard books gives how to find out the x maximum, but he will try to derive this one here. At this point, it go to a maximum changes. So, we will say dt by ds is equal to 0 and we know T is this one. So, this implies, so what is dT by dS? dT by dS of the form. This torque, dT by dS we have to find out, torque is of the form F1 x by F2 x. So, function of, so D, let us T is equal to this one, okay, sorry, let Y is, so dy by dx is equal to F2 x into D by dx of Fn x minus Fn x into D by dx of F2 x whole divided by F2 x whole square. So, let us uh, derive our uh, S maximum here. So, now let us see dt by ds. dt by ds is equal to some k constant k into Rs plus Rr by S square plus Xx plus Xr 
whole square. This is our f1, f2x that is a denominator. Okay. So, this will be our f1x and the denominator The denominator is the f 2 x. See if you see here in the denominator there is one more term is there that is into r r by s, r r by s is there. So, uh, this is this one uh, this is should be we will write this is also equal to ok. Let me complete that one. This is also equal to R R by S into 1 by omega S. This is the correct expression. So, K all these values including omega s, we can put as k constant. Then this r r by s, we will take it as the this is our f 1 x. So, so f 1 x if you see here that will be minus of k by r r by s square. Okay. Then minus k into r r by s, this will be equal to minus 2 into r s plus r r by s into r r by s square. Okay. So, this is the one. Divided by r s plus r r by s whole square plus x x x x plus x r whole square. This is our then whole square. So, this we are equating to 0. So, this is the final equation it is equal to 0. So, when you do this one the final equation will be let's final equation will be dt by ds is equal to 0 is equal to rs is equal to rs plus rr by s whole square plus xx plus xr whole square is equal to 2 r r square by s square plus 2 r s r r by s. So, solving this one you can find out the s that is the s maximum that is at this point and the peak value is equal to r r by root of r r square plus x x plus x r whole square you will get that one. So, if you to our torque speed characteristic now it will be like this. This is T, this is S, it will be linear then inversely proportional. So, at this point S is equal to 1, S is equal to 1 means 
this implies rotor speed is 0 or omega r is equal to 0 that is the starting starting torque okay now for variable speed operation how it is done see let us draw the torque speed characteristics in terms of omega s t here s is equal to 0 s is equal to 0 means omega r is equal to omega s here omega r is equal to 0 okay so the characteristic goes like this okay now for different omega r okay so if our omega s varies omega s is equal to omega s1 omega r is equal to omega c it is here so we can shift this curve like this so this is this is for omega s1 this is for omega s2 this is for omega s3 this is for omega s4 so different so for the same torque we can control the speed okay see compared to our separately excited machine what you are saying let us draw the torque speed characteristic like this so this is our omega this is our torque so if you see here the curve will be with the various omega it will be lowing like this this is the where the peak value happens and with the different speed we can go to different speed of operation here that means we will be restricting our operation only in this region this is the stable region this portions we will not be using why stable re uh, region suppose let us see here we are staying here at this point okay if you see here the speed decreases speed decreases means torque is more so it will pull you back here if it by uh, any end uh, the speed decreases here speed increases here so torque uh, here the speed uh, at this region as the speed increases the torque at this uh, torque is less than the load torque so it will again come back to the original speed so this is the stable region so we will be restricting to this region now with restricting to this region how we can have a <coughs> torque speed character, uh, speed control for the induction motor we will study now see this is our equivalent circuit is this is our inductance ls rs this is our mutual inductance lm this is our lr then R R by S. This is our applied voltage V. We will assume first approximation for this is the magnetizing current I M. So you typically for a magnetizing current will be much smaller uh, compared to the uh, load current. So we will assume the drop due to I m at the starter is negligible okay so we will assume the E starter drops are negligible able due to I m then V is approximately equal to E. So our approximate equivalent circuit is like this. See, but due to the rotor current, rotor current can also flow through the stator. So we will not neglect that one. So our approximate equivalent circuit is like this. Then R R by S R S L S 
Ella. Now, if you see here, output power again, we will see up from the approximate equivalent circuit. This will be the approximate equivalent circuit. Again, let us see what is the IR. IR is equal to V1 by V1 by root of RR by S square plus omega S L R R square. So, how we done? We said V, V, okay, applied voltage, no, okay, sorry, this V, applied voltage V, that is this one, V is same as E, this is our E. So, instead of V, we can put E. So, V is approximate to E, so the IR current here, IR is equal to V divided by root of RR square this one and torque is equal to P by omega S into omega S divided by P by 2, P is the number of poles. Okay. So, from this one for the three phase system output torque. This is from this is for the for the three phase system it will be 3 into 3 by 2 into V square divided by R R by S yes, whole square plus omega S square into L R square into R R by S. Yes. Okay, that is equal to three into I R square into R R by S. Yes. From this one, we have derived this one. Okay. Now let us see how this one we can approximate for a speed control. So now torque is equal to this can again further more V in three into V square by. RR square plus now I am bringing the omega slip square here and LRR square into see I am previous case I have multiplied by S square here also we are going to multiply it by S square so it will come SRR into P by 2 into 1 by omega S. So, because we know it S into omega S is equal to omega slip is equal to omega S minus omega R. Okay. So, this also again we can modify 3 into V square. I put omega S square here that means one more omega S we are added at the denominator. So, I have to put that omega s at the numerator omega s square into r r by r r square into omega slip square into l r r square into s omega s. Now, let us talk the torque. We can assume R R is much much greater than omega slip into L R. See omega slip is the difference in speed between the starter and the rotor. So, typically it will be 5 percent of omega S only will be equal to omega slip. So, R R 
we can assume the RR is much greater. So, we first approximation is equal to 3 into, so see here P by 2 is also there, that part here also P by 2, 3 into P by 2 into V by omega S whole square into See RR we assume it much greater than omega slip. So, this can be approximately it will be equal to S omega omega, finally it will come to omega slip divided by RR. Okay. So, this implies for low values of slip, low values of slip means our torque speed characteristics is like this T and this is our slip. S is equal to 0, S is equal to 1 here. So, low values of slip in this region, this is valid, this equation. So, this implies that torque is proportional to what is V by omega S? V by omega S, V and we assumed V is equal to E, applied voltage, V is equal to E, E is from the induced voltage. That will be proportional to flux into over omega s. Okay. So, this implies that V by omega s is proportional to phi. So, V by omega s square is proportional to phi, that is flux, area flux maximum value phi square into omega slip. So, if phi is constant, if phi is constant, torque is proportional to omega slip. See, to make the phi constant, see as I told from this equation, V is equal to E proportional to phi into omega S. So, now that implies that V by omega S is proportional to phi. Now, to keep phi constant, for speed control, V needs to be varied in proportion to omega S. in proportion to omega s. What is omega s? Omega s is also omega s is equal to 2 pi f, two pi our if it is 50 hertz 2 pi into 50. So, uh, for the speed variation as omega s varied, the applied frequency varies, we also should be varied. This is called V by F operation. So, V by F operation is called to keep the flux constant. Now, how we can do it? We have to find out for low values of slip from the steady state equivalent circuit. So, what all things required for a speed control now? We want to keep V by F constant. Now, how do you control it? how do we can control the speed feedback. So, this is we can do it like this. We have the speed reference. This is our speed reference. reference. This we will be oh sorry. This is our speed reference. This we will be giving to plus minus. So, we will use a PA controller here because speed is compared with the, this one. Now, this speed feedback that is omega feedback 
if there is a difference between the reference and speed feedback that shows there is a change in the driving torque and the load torque that is why the mismatch in speed happen so and also we know that torque that means we have to adjust the torque now we know the torque is proportional to slip so this output will give the slip so any change in the speed ref, uh, speed reference and speed control indicates there is a change in torque that means there is a change in slip so you have to give the correct slip so slip also you have to limit it as i told slip will be 5 percent of omega s yes. so you should have a positive slip and negative slip the limiter should be there this is called slip limit you have to then this slip limit we got so now we have to due to an inverter with the correct switching frequency that is a fs so this and this should be added omega feedback we can add this one this will give our omega s yes. okay now v by f operation so as the omega f varies you have to give generate the corresponding v so this way this is our linear control that is v by f operation but see this v by f operation we assume that starter drops are negligible but low frequencies of operation when v is proportional to phi into omega s omega s is very small this voltage e will be very small and the applied voltage will become equal to the starter drop so low frequency we will give a Uh, approximately uh, compared to around low speed up to around 5 percent we will give a boost here to take care of the starter drop see here so the correct r6 goes like this this is v this is a lookup table we can generate so from once the v is known we can generate the fs is known we can generate a equivalent Uh, sine waveform and we can compare with sine triangle or from the v uh, we can find out the uh, we can go for a space vector pw so that we have studied now so this is the pwm generator see this fs we can put into a lookup table and we can just a gen, uh, sine wave and multiply it by the amplitude of v so and you compare with the triangle that is also possible pwm waveform this we give it to inverters this is our inverter inverter will go to the motor and the motor will is connected to a taco for speed measurement and taco feedback will gain with the filter will give it here this way we can control the speed see this is called v by f operation now for many of the general purpose application see most of the drive drive they are called uh, comes uh, comes under a category called called general purpose drive that means these are simple speed control is only required simple speed control with v by f v by f operation v by f operation to keep the flux constant okay so that is especially for fans okay industrial fans and general purpose uh, drive is sufficient so to make a cost effective uh, solution many application they don't want a taco so that can save the thing so drive without speed feedback how it can be done drive without speed feedback
that means previously we have found out the slip from the reference speed and the feedback speed. Now we have to find out a different way of finding out slip. So this is called slip compensation. That means slip compensator. The taco we have to remove and we have to indirect way we have to find out the slip. How we can find out the slip? Let us say, let us go to the, again we use the steady state equivalent circuit. So here, this is our uh, LM leakage LR RR by S, okay. And here you have the IM, IM, here you have IS and here you have IR. So IS is we are supplying from the inverter, IS is coming from the inverter. So what is IM? Assuming sinus water currents are flowing through the uh, machine, we will take the fundamental component of the from the PWM. So IM, the peak value of sinus water IM is equal to IS into RR by S plus A into omega S into LR. That is 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 coming, the current flowing through this one is equal to IS into impedance of this one divided by the total impedance. So this will be equal to simple network problem plus is equal to J omega S into LR plus L. Okay. So we can put this LM mutual inductance plus rotor leakage inductance is equal to LRR. This is rotor self inductance. So this implies this is equal to IM is equal to IS into RR. See I am multiplying by S. So RR plus S omega is equal to slip. So this is to bring the slip inside. The slip is required. Torque is proportional to slip. That is the signal's frequency divided by the rotor frequency. Now slip into LR divided by RR plus J omega slip into LR. Okay. So for sinusoidal excitation, the IM, the maximum value of IM, the peak value of the IM, IM mode is equal to IS into root of RR square plus omega slip into LR whole square divided by RR square plus omega slip into LRR whole square. Okay. Now for a machine, IM gives the magnetizing current. So if you, let us go to the next page, let us write down the mod IM is equal to IS mod into root of RR square plus omega slip LR whole square divided by root of RR square plus omega slip LRR whole square. Now IM is the magnetizing current. So 
So, this will be constant constant that is the peak value of the sinusoidal value sinusoidal current constant with V by F operation. Okay. So, now I m what is I s now? So, we have to find out I s for a particular slip I s is equal to I m into root of R r square plus omega slip square into from this equation from the this equation L r r square divided by R r square plus omega slip into L r square. So, approximately if you plot this one for a machine, we can compute for a machine, parameters are known. So, if you know with the slip, omega slip we are uh, restricting between plus or minus 5 percent of omega s. So, this will be approximately car will come. This is our I m. So, as the slip varies, torque varies, I s will vary along this point. Now, we are restricted to this point. So, this one for general purpose V by F drive application, we can also approximate like this, linearize it, linear curve. So, that means I s. When omega slip is maximum, I s is maximum. So, I s is equal to this value I s gives I s I m plus I r value. So, I m is this value. When omega slip is 0, there is no load current, I m is equal to I s. As the slip varies, I r varies. This from here, I r varies. I s also varies. So, the, the approximately this curve you can generate in a simple control uh, system. How do you uh, do uh, generate a closed loop control with this one? So, let us see. See, we don't we want only general purpose drive. Drive with slip compensator or with uh, uh, without speed sending, without speed sensing. a cost effective solution. So, you have a speed reference, this is our speed reference. Okay. The moment that is our speed, but for inverter we require the uh, singular speed. So, to the speed reference we will add the slip, this is our omega slip. this is our omega s. So, we have a lookup table here for any motor what is V versus F omega s till low speed we give a boost of 5 percent then it will go linearly like this, this is our V s. So, V s will come here omega s also comes here. PWM generation. Let us say sine triangle PWM with V and uh, omega S which is proportionally of V by F. We can have a uh, sine, uh, sine lookup table, uh, the amplitude is controlled by V, frequency is controlled by F and it can be com uh, compared with a uh, uh, triangle waveform. So, sine triangle PWM has studied. So, this will go to the inverter. inverter to the motor. See for any motor protection is required. So, current sensing is a must. So, that any over current happens immediately you have to switch off the system. So, from the current reference okay, this is our absolute value I s we are sensing. This same I s 
here compared with the I reference value. Maybe this I reference is uh, around uh, 2 times or 1.5 uh, times the maximum load current. If you set it, a comparator will be there. When it goes more than that value, it will trip the system, tripping signal will be given here. That is trip signal. Now this same IS will bring it here, we will have a lookup table from our slip compensator, okay. This is the lookup table with the slip, this is our IM, omega slip. So from here for the machine, for the particular IS, we can find out the slip from here, lookup table and feed it here. So this is a general purpose try, okay. This PWM generation whole thing can be used a microcontroller or in a DSP environment also very easy to implement now. So this way it goes. So for the throughout the modulation of the region, throughout the region we will keep the V by F constant. This is V by F control, okay. Now we said the torque is proportional to linear region, it will be proportional to phi into omega slip, okay, that is torque. So phi we kept constant using V by F and slip, torque is controlled with the slip. So that means the correct V by F is given to the machine with the slip information and the rotor speed, okay. But if you see here, we have assumed sinusoidal steady state equivalent circuit. That means our equivalent circuit is like this. So this is our inductance LS, this is LR. L. So we found the drop across the LS is equal to omega S LS into the IS. That means for a sinusoidal excitation, the rate of change of current or the voltage is only due to the variation of omega S. But many drive application, that is a steady state equivalent, many uh, drive application, the amplitude also can vary. So L into di by dt, we are taken as omega s i into L. There can be change of not only with the frequency, amplitude also can change. That means the di by dt times not only the frequency, the amplitude also can vary. That is a dynamic condition. Then this steady state equivalent circuit is not uh, not the correct one for the dynamic conditions. So what is mean by dynamic conditions? Let us see. So our steady state equivalent circuit is like this. So this is our IM, this is our IR and this is our IS. And first approximation we set E and V, okay. We said V is equal to E, starter drops are negligible, okay. And E is proportional to phi into omega IS. So we approximated in the V by F control, that is omega S, V, we approximated like this. But low speed we give a boost like this. So our V by F curve, it is goes like this. So this is our high speed operation. This is the maximum rated voltage for V. So that means 
if this assumption is correct we are keeping the uh, I m uh, the voltage flux air gap flux is constant. But if you see here the current which is producing the torque is the I r. So, if you see the phasor diagram for this one see you have the I m here to I m we have the E here this is our minus E why minus E see if you see according to notation V is the current is going from V here it is entering E okay. So, uh, current leaving will take positive current entering E will take negative that is why it has gone here. So, minus actual V when you compute the V we have to take the minus 1 and take it. So, E so, with to this E you it will have a current I R here. So, starter will to compensate it will generate another I R minus I R here and you will get the I S here this is the I S. Now, parallel to this one I S R S I S R S then omega J omega that is 90 degree omega S L S into I S. So, this is our V this is our V actual V okay. When you assume this starter drops are negligible this V will be along E this is the I m. Now you see the where is the air gap flux, air gap flux will be proportional to I m. So, let us say our air gap flux will be flux will be phi m is equal to L m into I m, I m the peak value this is the peak value of the air gap flux. But if you see the flux which is coupling to the starter is the flux due to the leakage plus I m that is this is the flux. Let us say this is psi s this is the flux coming here. This is our psi m air gap flux. Similar way the flux which is coupling to the rotor conductors the leakage flux this leakage flux will not be it is only coupling to the rotor conductors it will not come to the starter through the area. So, this area flux is the one which coupled both to the starter conductors and the rotor conductors. So, the total flux which is coupling to the rotor is the rotor flux let us say psi r is this one. Oh I have put phi m here so okay phi m we will put phi m also here this is phi r this is phi m this is phi s ok. So, let us find out where is our according to this notation where is our psi s and psi r. So, but phi the phi s is equal to L m i m plus L s leakage inductance plus i s. So, L s i s will be parallel to i s. So, it will be along this direction. So, our for a particular value of this is L s i s. So, our phi s will be here. Where is our psi r? Psi r will be current direction is in this direction the psi r will be equal to L m I m minus L m I r ok. So, minus i r minus i r means i r is in this direction. So, minus i r will be i r into i r into l r will be in this direction parallel to the i r this is l r i r and our psi r will be or phi r will be in this direction. That means, phi r is equal to l m i m minus of L r I r. So, that is this way it happens psi r will be here. So, if you see here 
this phi r and l r r will be 90 degree. That means the current for the same like separately excited machine because of the winding separately excited the flux is orthogonal to the uh, the starter current vector. But here in the induction machine for all dynamic conditions to make control the rotor current and keeping the flux constant. So that means this L R I R, L R is a leakage inductance or it is a, it is a value, this I R current vector is will always perpendicular to the psi r because if you say phi r, phi r is along this one and d, d by d phi r by dt is the voltage is coming across uh, r r by s and r r by is the resistance. So, voltage and current will be in the same phase. So, d and phi r is sinusoidal excitation, phi r and v will be 90 degree phase shifted. So, that shows phi r and i r will be 90 degree phase shifted. So, that means for v by f control under all conditions, all conditions phi r and not phi m should be kept constant, should be kept constant. So, now the question is for good dynamic performance that the flux should not vary, the flux which is responsible for the torque, uh, torque component that is I R should be kept constant for all dynamic conditions. Then only we can have a high dynamic performance uh, from the induction machine similar to a separately excited DC machine. This we will study. Then the steady state equivalent circuit is not valid because in the steady state equivalent circuit the d phi by d t or d i by d t times we assume that only the frequency is varying, magnitude is not varying. But for all dynamic conditions, the magnitude variation also along with the frequency variation we have to take uh, uh, into consideration. Then we require a dynamic equivalent circuit. From the dynamic equivalent circuit, what is the condition? The V by F that is constant flux operation under dynamic condition. That means rotor flux uh, keeping constant. How to achieve? We will study in the uh, subsequent class.